So what are some really good stocks to be watching right now? What's going on team? It's Ricky with TechBit Solutions and we got really good feedback on a video that we made earlier this week when we simply talked about some stocks that we're watching for you know investing long term and on top of that uh, also some intraday plays meaning some stocks that we wanted to day trade because the margin or profit potential was there. So if you guys want us to continue to make these videos, I really hope with the very simple idea of just dropping a thumbs up is something that you can take into consideration if you learned something new. So without further ado, one of the stocks, again, uh, all the stocks that we talked about in this video are in no way any stock suggestion. You should never trade based off someone else's opinion, but with the idea that I really hope that even just one of the stocks that we talk about today in some way meets your criteria where you can add it to your watch list and later follow up with it if you ever find it to be something to be a trade worth trading or a stock worth investing. The one that I want to start off with very quickly is FSLY. And you might be asking, well, Ricky, this thing is down 23% on the day. Why would I want to put my money in something that is down 23%? This is not an investment long term. This is more of a trade opportunity. And the reason why is when you trade something, you buy and close it right within the same day. And although it is down significantly because of that aggressive drop that it had during the aftermarket trading session, one of the things that we need to take into consideration right now is that because it dropped so much, and we can take a little bit of a step back and you guys can let me know in the comment section what you guys think. It has a lot of reversal opportunity. It doesn't have to make a full recovery. What is the full recovery? Well, based off of where it opened today to where it was trading at yesterday, it's over 50% ROI, right? Potential, not something that I would actually think is going to happen. With that being said, why am I talking about it right now? Well, if we go to the one day, one minute chart from when the market opened, if you would have just bought when the market open to where it's at right now, it has gained 9%. So although it's down 23%, this is something that you always need to take into consideration that it doesn't matter if a stock is up or down on the day, if your intention is to day trade it because your profit potential or opportunity potential is not dependent on yesterday's close and today's open, it's based off of how it's currently trading. And since the market has opened, this thing is trading better than a lot of stocks today. And it has recovered quite a bit as it makes sense because of that significant drop. Does this mean that this is the best stock to trade for everyone? Well, no, it's already pushed up nearly 10% since market opened. But based off of where it was before and where it's at right now, I can see why a lot of people are paying attention to it. It's doing a great job as of right now making higher highs, higher lows. It's trading in between the middle and top VWAP and it's showing signs of, yeah, it is pulling back, but when it corrects itself, it breaks above the EMA line and then it pushes up. It has a very consistent pattern as of right now. Does this mean that this is always going to continue? No, it could aggressively sell off again tomorrow. And this is something that I wanna make sure that you are made aware of is that there are two sides to every opportunity and just as much as it already dropped down, it can continue to sell off. With that being said, all I'm saying is, because it's sold off so much, I can see why a lot of people are gonna begin to add it to their watch list, set their alerts, and if it meets your criteria where there's a consistent pattern, it's indicating signs of an uptrend, it's not too volatile that it's you know difficult to trade, then maybe it's something that you can take into consideration as you can see the profit potential and based off of previous trading prices as of yesterday are there, right? So I wanted to talk about that one very quickly. I wanted to talk about DraftKings. DraftKings is one of the stocks that we talked about on Monday that we saw for a reversal opportunity, but what did we say? It's patterns tend to repeat themselves. They don't always have to. DraftKings has done a great job trying to trade above the SMA line. We are now trading below it. We are trading below the EMA line and we have gotten rejected based off of previous patterns. Does this mean that it's going to continue to make lower lows? No, but it doesn't mean that it can't. So this is why it's so important to set your alerts at critical areas where once it actually begins to indicate signs of an uptrend, then you can follow up with it. So if you see value in DraftKings, right, because of the profit potential, which is about 20%, if I'm not mistaken, if once we break above the EMA line to based off of previous highs, well, nearly 30%. So with that being said, even if you capture five or 10% of that, right, the goal is there's no such thing as a perfect trade, but the goal is to put your money in something that is showing signs of growth. And as of right now, it's doing everything but that. It's making lower lows and lower highs. And with that being said, think about this. As long as you just add it to your watch list, you set your alerts, the more it sells off, right? If it actually recovers, if you're so certain that it's going to recover, if it actually recovers, 
the more it sells off, the more profit potential you build for yourself because the more patient that you are staying, right? So the more it drops, the more profit potential it has for an overall recovery. So this is why it pays to be patient. So just as much as it could go up, it can go down, of course. And of course, we're going to be setting alerts on both sides. I just thought that this one was something that I wanted to follow up with as I spoke about it on Monday. And as you guys can see, it's still getting rejected. So this means that we still don't have confirmation of higher highs. Uh, the one that did end up getting confirmation, uh, and it's actually not here. I thought I had it on my watch list. Uh, but if I'm not mistaken, it's DPZ, which is Dominoes. And we talked about this one very quickly yesterday where we were talking about this one when it was right around 390. It hit highs of about 411 and then it pulled back. This does not come as a surprise. It's trying to hold, it's pretty much break even today. It's trying to hold around this general area. But you guys can see that it has a very consistent pattern of the high points, low points, high points, low points, high points, low points, high points, low points, high points, and low points. And during these low points, during consolidation, it pushes up, it pulls back, it pushes up and pulls back. And sometimes it consolidates longer than other times. So this is super important to understand that until we get full on confirmation of higher highs and higher lows and it validates the EMA line, we still have not validated the EMA line. We didn't see a nice push up, but when it went for a pullback for a test of support at the EMA line, it got rejected. So with that being said, it still pulled back further than I think a lot of people might have would have wanted, right? So with that being said, we can set our alerts and until we see these higher highs and higher lows above the EMA line, then that's when I would aggressively or more aggressively go in with my position size. As of right now, as we're still in that consolidation phase, either don't take a position just yet or be very careful with your position size. This one doesn't offer crazy return, but this one's much more consistent than a lot of the other stocks and the profit potential isn't that bad. It's about eight to 9%. And even if you capture 5% of that, again, it's something that I can see a lot of people paying attention to due to the consistency that it's been offering for the past 180 days. If you agree so, you can add it to your watch list. If you don't agree, then that's the amazing thing about the stock market is you get to decide where you put your money and what stocks you add to your watch list. Now, one specific stock that I wanted to talk about is I want to talk about this stock as I find it to be the most worthy stock out of all the different stocks within this niche is the airline industry. And I want to talk about Boeing because in seven days from today, a lot of them are going through their earnings reports. And one of the things that we we're talking about today within our Learn Plan Profit Group is we were talking about the airlines and how some industries, of course, have taken longer to recover than others. And the airline industry and the cruise line industry are definitely those. But one of the things that I have to say is from when I traveled, as I tend to travel a lot, especially visiting my family in California, when I was traveling during the midst of the pandemic, I was going through these airlines, right? And I was traveling at different parts of the United States and these airlines were empty. TSA lines were empty. It's not really like that anymore. I took you know, um, a flight from Vegas to Los Angeles and then from Los Angeles back to Arizona about three, four weeks ago. And the, the you know, flight was full. And this was something that was either very early in the morning or very late at night. So I've seen the capacity actually go up, but as we can see, the demand still hasn't fully recovered as I think they've just been taking very, very, very big hits. Boeing Airlines is one that I've been paying a lot of attention to just due to all the contracts that it has, of course, with the government. Uh, with that being said, I think one of the airlines that has been hit the hardest has to be American Airlines and the money that they've been blowing through every single day. If you haven't looked into that, then I would really encourage you to look into that. I do agree with a lot of you. They are very sold, uh, very oversold based off of previous trading prices. So I can see why a lot of you are paying attention to it, but I want to make sure that you guys are made aware of earnings. Earnings is on, as you can see, October 22nd, which is just in seven days. And this is so important as this could either act as a negative or positive catalyst. So I think that more now than ever before, if you've wanted to add some of these airlines to your watch list, then maybe now is the time. It doesn't mean that you have to go all in as direction is unclear, but I can see why based off of you know previous patterns and how it used to trade. And if you are really trying to invest in long term, why a lot of people are paying a lot of attention to airlines because they are some of the few industries that have not made a steady recovery. And thinking five or 10 years from now, we have some form of protection against this COVID, right? 
we can begin to see a steady recovery for the overall airline industry. Of course, some industries uh, or some airlines are doing much worse than others. I would have to say American Airlines is one that has been affected the most. Uh, one of the other airlines that I have seen that is doing a little bit better, not great, but a little bit better is Southwest Airlines something that you guys can take into consideration but there's so many airlines out there jet blue spirit airlines and the one that i'm personally paying attention to is just because of the contracts that they have with the government i really see long-term value in boeing and that's just my opinion and you guys can let me know in the comment section what you guys think but this is something that as we are approaching earnings season that i am watching very carefully because if there is any form of negative catalyst which is something that based off of the previous earnings unfortunately for earnings uh for boeing it dropped it aggressively this is something that i'm planning on buying and investing long term as i'm okay with holding a position you know five years from now uh, it's not something that i plan to go in super aggressive but it's something that based off of current trading prices let's say that we drop down to 150 right based off of current trading prices right around 163 if we do make a recovery to the 345 i mean we'd be seeing over a hundred percent return and if i can put in just a small dollar amount where it's enough money that i feel like i have some skin in the game but not so much that i feel emotional if it drops down to maybe even sub 100 where I feel like it's uncontrollable, right? I want it to be an effective and well-balanced dollar amount that I'm comfortable with holding long-term and as and if it begins to indicate signs of an uptrend, I can slowly begin to buy more. So again, just because I put my money in something does not mean that you should as well, but I'm just thinking big picture, we would hope that five or 10 years from now, we would be escaping this unfortunate devastation that we have currently experienced from the COVID period and how it's affected uh, you know, the airlines. Cruise lines are a little bit different as they're not as essential, but it's something that I'm very excited to follow up with as well. So uh, those are the specific stocks that I personally wanted to talk about. I also wanted to quickly follow up with uh, yesterday's video. Uh, we spoke about the market being a little bit more on the overbought side. It had some pullback potential. We got confirmation shortly after that it did break below the EMA line. At the end of the day, let's be honest, no one ever knows exactly what's gonna happen with the market. All I said in that video was it made sense on why it could pull back just based off of previous patterns on how aggressive it pushed up as we saw that. And it showed a very similar setup to how we were trading towards the end of August or the beginning of September and how we pulled back. One of the things that I wanna remind you is we are experiencing a very similar setup to when we aggressively sold off, we consolidated for about one to two days and then we continued that sell off. So just because it's showing signs of a potential support right now doesn't mean that it has to hold. So when direction is unclear, maybe the best thing that you can do is not take a position at all or keep a very effective position size where it's not so much that if it begins to go south that you hesitate to cut losses. So maybe something that you can take into consideration. I have my alerts on both sides and I'm very, very excited to stay up to date with the overall direction of forward slash NQ and the overall market. So again, I really hope that you learned something new in this video. If you guys did, I hope that you guys can consider smashing that like button. If you guys wanna see future videos or want me to talk about specific stocks, then just make sure you drop those down in the comment section and I'd love to follow up with a video just for you. On top of that, if you guys haven't stayed connected, we do run an absolute free Facebook group. It's the largest free Facebook group for those who trade in the stock market and it's 292,000 members and it's that first link down below. If you guys wanna watch me trade live as soon as tomorrow, whenever it is, if you're ready to join our Learn Plan Profit team, that's gonna be that second link down below. Until then, we'll see you guys on the next one. Like always, let's make sure that we end the year on a green note. Take it easy, team.